Hello! Today I'm going to show you how to make this single bed with this lovely curved head and footboard which I've based on the design um, in the painting of Van Gogh's bedroom and I haven't dressed this bed um, it's just the frame that I'm going to show you today I'll also show you how to make a mattress but I have done a video, a double bed that I've dressed so you could have a look at that if you want some ideas um, for bedding and how to make the bedding so for this project again I've used a Besh um, craft wood and that's spelt O-B-E-C-H-E but do have a look at my video working with wood um, for other woods that will be suitable for this project and all of the all of the tutorials on my channel and I've used a sheet wood and a strip wood for this um, in 1.5 millimeters that's 1 16th of an inch and 2.5 millimeters which is 3 30 seconds of an inch and this strip is 5 by 5 and that's 13 64ths of an inch and then to make the mattress when we get to it I've used this foam which is uh, 14 millimeters thick and I think that was 9 30 seconds of an inch if you prefer to work in inches and then all the usual sort of tools um, the craft knife and I use this Swan Morton craft knife which takes a size 10A blade and always put a new blade in at the start of a project or if it begins to catch or drag along the wood which means it's becoming blunt steel rule for measuring and for using with your craft knife to cut the wood nice sharp pencil for accurate marking I've used a flat head screwdriver to create the grooves in the head and footboard along with the steel wool to shape the head and footboard um, I use a scribe and you'll need a piece, just a piece of paper as well to uh, make a template for the curve to attach the mouldings um, I use these clamps or you can use clothes pegs if you haven't got any clamps uh, wood glue I use this um, Gorilla wood glue which is really strong and it bonds really quickly so you don't have to wait around for too long in between attaching the parts and then I've just used a normal household interior varnish um, and this is in medium oak but obviously your colour choice is yours and then just a nice sharp pair of scissors for cutting the foam and a couple of different grades of sandpaper and if you follow my videos you'll know that I cut them into these small pieces to make them easier to use and a fine grade I like a 500 for finishing and I use a 120 um, in there somewhere for sanding the edges of the wood when I've cut it I think that's everything um, so let's get started OK, we're going to begin by constructing the mattress support. So take the side and the end pieces. And I've just dispensed some glue here onto a piece of card. And I'm using a cocktail stick to apply it. And just want to apply a small amount to each end of each end piece. And just pop that back there. And this one as well. And then we're just going to glue these two end pieces between the side pieces. So make sure that it's flush with that very end. So at that edge there, you should have a nice flat edge. And then do this piece. Again, so you've got a nice flat edge on this outside of the piece. and then attach the remaining side piece sort of pulling it all square as you do so
Now once you've got it all positioned you can just very carefully turn it and then just press it together making sure that it stays square and then don't try and pick that up as it might just fall apart but just slide it along your work surface and that can then just be left to dry so whilst the mattress surround is drying we're going to shape the head and footboards and we're going to begin by making a template so just take a piece of paper 77 millimeters wide so the same width as the head and footboard and about um, 100 millimeters or four inches long and fold that in half lengthwise and crease in the central line And then unfold that and to make the curve we're going to use um, a compass so set the compass at 88 millimeters or three and a half inches wide so that's the distance between the pinpoint there and your pencil nib And then you want to position it so that the pencil nib is right at the top of the paper and in the centre. So use that central line and the pin of the compass should be in the centre down here. So just dig that into place and then just make, make the curve. And if you don't have a compass um, you can use a, a tin or a plate. Um, that I think, if my maths are correct, would be about seven inches in diameter. Um, but just so as it um, goes all the way across and about 10 millimetres down from either side. But the best thing to use is obviously the compass. And then just fold that the other way. I'm just going to cut that out. And then place that onto the um, headboard I'm doing first so that the top of the paper is just at the top of the board just so if you've got enough um, room to get your pencil nib in there and then just draw that onto the headboard to so making sure that the sides of the paper are in line with the sides of the wood and just draw that on like that and then keep this template because we'll use that for the footboard and for the head and footboard mouldings and then take um, the scribe which is this pointed end tool and just very carefully trace that line or score that line into the wood so you're not trying to make a deep groove at the moment, we're just very lightly going over, just using this like a pencil and just making a light score in the wood. And then you can go back across and this time just go slightly deeper. Now you've got the groove there, it's easier. And because we're working against the grain, your the nib of this might just come off track a little bit. So just, just go very lightly and that will help to keep it um, in, the, in the groove that you've already made. There, so I think that's enough there. I've got the curve into the wood. 
and then you want to take um, the craft knife and be really really careful here just always be aware of where your fingers are and then you just want to score again into the wood and this time using the tip of the knife and you're not trying to cut through at this stage we're just sort of making a deeper and cleaner score and just keep going and gradually you will cut through the wood it's better to do a lot of light scores than try and cut through first time otherwise you might find the wood will split starting to come off now. There we are, let's keep going. It's really tempting to sort of want to cut through at this stage, but do just keep doing light scores. Always be aware of where your fingers are. And when it's like this and it just won't go through, it could be that there's a knot in the wood and they're always a lot harder to cut through. So do that same process on the footboard using your same template and we're not going to shape them yet because we'll do that once we've attached the, the moulding and we can move on to the next stage. So once you've shaped both pieces, the head and the footboard, we're going to score grooves into each piece. So take your ruler and just make a faint pencil mark across the top edge so just below the curve there, at 11 millimeter. Um, if you're working in inches, that's seven sixteenths of an inch. And do that all the way across. And then along the bottom edge as well. So that's 11 millimeters or seven sixteenths of an inch, like so. And then turn the piece onto its side, place the steel rule um, across the piece just below the pencil marks. That's just to allow for the thickness of the screwdriver. And then just using the very corner of that end tip, just score lightly across the edge of the ruler. And then just do a couple more scores to create the groove. So just a light score to start and then just a couple more just to make the groove slightly deeper like so. couple more to do and then when you get to the end just turn the piece around so that the ruler doesn't tip off the end and do the final score so 
and then just take a small piece of sandpaper and fold it to make a crease and then just work that along each of the grooves just to smooth the edges. So do that with both pieces and then we'll come back and cut the mouldings. Okay, so to shape the head and footboard top mouldings, follow the same procedure along the top edge of the piece and then take the template and just lay it across the bottom so that these side sort of edges or the corners there are level with the bottom of the piece of wood and then you can draw your line like so and again follow the same procedure to then cut that out and I've done two here so once you've done them just use um, fine grade sandpaper to tidy that bottom edge Sweep it along the curve like that, and then we can attach these to the head and foot board. So apply glue to the back of the moulding, and then just attach that along that top edge so that the sides are flush with the side of the head or footboard and that that top edge is as well and don't worry that the top edge looks a little bit messy at the moment because we'll tidy that up once the glue has set and just press that into place and use a cocktail stick to remove any excess glue from along the bottom edge like that and then we want to attach the bottom moulding so again apply glue to the back of the moulding and then attach that so it's flush along that bottom edge so the sides and the bottom a flush with the sides and bottom of your head or footboard and again remove any excess glue and then you can use clamps well, I'm using clothes pegs because I've got more of them and just clip that into place Always have one right at the end. And you can put on there as many as you like. The more the better. It stops the wood then coming away from the, the piece that you're gluing it to. And you can then pop that to one side to dry. Do the same with your headboard. I'm going to do that in a second. I just want to attach the final end support to one end of our mattress now that the glue has dried. So just apply glue just to the support, the, the end supports, not to the ends of the side supports. And then glue that final end support into place, lay it down on the desktop and just push it so that it's right in the centre there and just glue to this end support 
And then these gaps are where our legs will go when we finally attach this to the headboard. And for this one I'm going to use clamps. And just clamp that together. And I'll put one more in the middle there. And then that's now top heavy so be careful when you lift it. And again that can just be put to one side to dry. Now I'll get on with gluing these together. So once you've allowed plenty of time for the mouldings to dry, take a um, about 120 grade sandpaper or just something a bit harsher and work it along this top curve um, just to smooth off the join there. And just sweep it across the top and you can go in small movements back and forth. And just basically keep going until you've got a nice smooth line along that top edge. You will still see a join, um, but just keep sanding until it's sort of hardly visible and you've got a nice smooth edge along there. And I'd already started this one, so I've been working on it for a little while. And just keep going and then just wiping off the dust and seeing how it looks. And that actually feels nice and smooth, so when I varnish it, that will also hide some of the join there. And then just swap for a, a slightly smoother paper, and I'm going to use a 500 here. And we just want to round over this top edge. So I'm just going along and I'm sort of sweeping the paper from front to back. Just so that we haven't got a sharp edge along that top curve there. makes it look a bit nicer. And then what you can also do, and you have a piece of sandpaper on your worktop, and just sweep the piece across just in the one direction so we don't curve the edges. And this will just make sure that the mouldings are flush at either side for when we attach the legs. And do that on the other side as well. Like so. And I've done the foot already done the footboard. And then take each of the legs and we're just going to round over um, this top edge again, just so it looks a bit neater. Um, I've done this one here. So Again, with the sandpaper on your worktop, just sweep the leg, hold it at a 45 degree angle and just sweep it towards you. You just want to do that a couple of times and on each side. And then again, you can take your 500 grade paper and just tidy that up. So you're sweeping over the top and over the corners as well. And we're just rounding off the top there. Like that. So do that on each of the short and long legs. Okay, so I'm now going to attach the legs to the footboard. So turn the short legs onto the side and make a pencil mark 10 millimetres, or if you're working in inches, that's 25 sixty-fourths from the bottom, so from this flat edge of each short leg. Pencil mark across there, and that one as well. 10 millimetres, or 25 sixty-fourths. And then apply glue to each side of the footboard on each edge and 
and then attach it so that the this bottom flat edge sits just above that pencil line. Press it into place and then attach the remaining leg again so the flat edge is just above the pencil line. I'm just going to remove the excess glue from along the joins. And that's especially important if you're varnishing your piece because varnish doesn't like glue and it won't take over it. So always remove the glue and then you can use sandpaper as well just to sand along all the joins so that you'll get a more even finish with your varnish. And then just carefully turn that and press those together making sure that the legs are flat on the worktop. And just carefully move that to one side to dry. And now we'll attach the long legs to the headboard. So again, turn them onto the side. And then we want to make pencil marks 10 millimeters from that bottom flat edge again. And 24 millimeters. And finally 32 millimeters. So we need three marks on here. So 10, 24 and 32 millimetres. And if you're working in inches, that's 25 60 fourths, 15 sixteenths and 17 60 fourths of an inch. So let's do the remaining leg as well. And then we want the headboard and the support as well. So apply glue to each edge of the headboard. and then to each end of the support. And then the headboard will sit just above that top line. So the flat edge is just above the, the highest pencil line. Let's move over a bit. And then the support is just above the next pencil line down to the central one. And then attach the remaining leg, again keeping those pieces just above those pencil lines. And again, just press that carefully together. the excess glue and that piece can also just be left to dry before we attach the mattress support. So once you've allowed time for the glue to dry erase the um, top pencil marks on the leg there and on the short leg as well. And just pop that piece to one side and then the supported end of the mattress we're going to glue above this bottom pencil line. So just apply glue in each of those sort of gaps there at the edge. And then this will sit just above those bottom pencil lines and you should have a nice snug fit in there. Just press it in and then press these long supports against the leg and then 
you can just sort of press the legs in to make sure that that's sticking to that middle support there. And again, remove the excess glue. And then I just want to leave this again to allow for the glue to set just before we attach the footboard just so that it doesn't all fall apart. So I'm just going to pop that to one side. Okay, so now apply glue along this bottom edge all the way along there. And then we're going to attach um, this bottom footboard and the inside um, between the legs there will sit on this bottom mattress support. So it should sit centrally. So the legs are just touching the end of the long supports. And this bit here is level with that central support. Or the, the end support rather and just squeeze that together and then we're going to hold this together with clamps I'll just put one at each end a couple in the middle there And again, that piece can be left to dry, and then we'll attach the slats. So to attach the slats, begin by applying glue along the inside edge of the mattress support. And then just down either side piece, roughly by about 14 millimetres, which is the depth of the slat. And then push that into place. And there'll just be a slight little overhang at each side here. I've just made it slightly shorter than the support. So sort of manoeuvre it into place and press that down. And then just turn the bed around and apply glue along this end support. And again, just down each side piece to the thickness of the slat, just roughly. And then place another one there. And then just sort of make a, either by eye or you can use your ruler, just make a pencil mark in the centre of those two. So roughly about there. And the same on the other side. And that just gives you an idea where to place the central support. And this time apply glue to each end of the, of the slat, sorry. And then just sit that so it's sitting centrally over that pencil mark. And at the other side as well. And then the remaining four we're just going to place evenly in each of these gaps. Put that one about there. Just using your eye to make sure it's sort of straight with the one that's already in place, because we know that's straight. And 
that one there. And I've just moved that one slightly. And these don't have to be perfect because they, if you're going to dress the bed, they will be hidden under the mattress. As well as supporting the mattress, they are sort of supporting the whole structure. So you've got a nice sturdy piece that will last. And the final one. So again, it's a question of now leaving those to dry. Oops. And once the glue has fully dried, you can then sand the piece using a fine grade sandpaper to prepare it for paint or varnish. And again, like I say, if you're using varnish, just concentrate along all the joins and just use a small piece of sandpaper. You can fold it in half so that you can easily get into all the joins, all the nooks and crannies and then it will be ready to apply paint or varnish. And here is the completed bed. And I gave that two coats of varnish and after the first coat I just gave it a light sand. And that just gives a nicer finish. And then to make a mattress, cut a piece of card that is just slightly narrower than the bed on all sides. And then when you do come to dress it, that will allow for the thickness of the fabric. And then apply glue to the card. going to use a spreader Just spread that around like so and then attach that to a piece of foam and this is 14 millimeters thick um, and attach it along a straight edge and then you just save on your phone like that and then I'm going to weigh that down with some books but just so you don't get glue on all your favourite books just put a piece of um, kitchen towel over the top and then you can just weigh that down and then just leave that until the glue has set and then I've got one here where the glue has dried and then you can just cut round some nice sharp scissors like so and there's your mattress and then your bed is ready to dress So as I said in the intro, I've done a um, double bed tutorial um, which is fully dressed so you can have a look at that video if you want some tips on how to dress the bed. And I hope you've enjoyed this project. If so, please do subscribe to the channel as there's lots more tutorials to come. And thank you for watching.